Good morning, Tucson. Welcome to Mineral City TV. I'm your host, Raymond Hall. It's opening day here at Mineral City and there is lots of activity. There are doors open and customers everywhere. Um, it's a beautiful day and we're gonna start at building A in room A5 with my good friend, Tomek Prosker. He is the man behind Mineral City TV. This was his idea, his concept. He's putting it all together with our great cameraman, Merrick, who you can't see, but he's doing a fantastic job here with us. So Tomek, you're from Poland and you're the owner of Spear for Minerals. Tell us a little bit about you and what you do with your business. So our business uh, is located in Tucson, Arizona. It's called Spearifer Minerals. And we travel to many locations worldwide and try to mine or, or uh, buy some specimens from new finds, some new places. We do a lot of exploration in Congo, Morocco. Uh, in last years, before we did a lot in India, Romania, Bulgaria, uh, many countries all around the world. So you get around. Yes, we yeah. travel a lot. <laughs> all right. Well, everyone wants to see minerals. That's what we're here for. So let's take a look at what you brought for the show let's this year. Let's come to my room. We're going to start with an exciting new find from Morocco. I'm going to jump over on this side. <clears throat> Everyone's been talking about them. They're beautiful, just lovely naturalite sprays. So these naturalites came last year from Morocco, from High Atlas. Uh, and High Atlas is famous for many, many small finds in, uh, connected with the intrusive rocks, which enter in the sedimentary Jurassic and Cretaceous rocks. And what is the most known from the area are the apatites, uh, also amphiboles, pyroxens, zircons. But from some time to time, we have uh, minerals from the zeolite group, like chabazite, stilbite, stellarite. And last year, there was a small zone found in the Tirist. This is a village located high in the mountains, where they found the naturalites. And these naturalites were associated with analcim. Analcim form a small layer overgrown by naturalite. And on the few specimens, there were also calcites. This material was very popular, so only a few specimens left here in my showcase. Yeah, I grabbed a couple myself. <laughs> but uh, we saved many of them for our website, so uh, every week during Tucson there will be several pieces posted where, which were never shown to public, including the best ones with calcite. So if you go to spiriferminerals.com uh, on the auctions, you can find them. And also in our section of articles, notes and travel log, you can find a very short article about this find showing the area mm -hmm. and saying a little bit about geology. You took a trip to Morocco recently with uh, young mineral collectors, did you not? Yes. How, uh, how was that? And tell us about that. It was fun, but I think you have to ask the participants. Okay, if they enjoy true, it, true, true. From my side, it was a very nice trip. Not many people, young people, we, can, we could do some exploration. A little I thought bit it was a great idea. And collecting. And from uh, the same area, in fact, with the naturalites, when we are in the High Atlas in Morocco, are the new prenites. Prenite is quite well-known mineral from High Atlas, Morocco, but uh, this is new style of this yellowish green, thick uh, crystals forming balls. A higher it's, luster than you usually see on prenites, yeah, that's too. that's true. Those it's are great. maybe not high-end uh, minerals, but something new, something interesting. Absolutely. All right, well, in the next case over, you can't help but notice all the tanzanite and gem crystals, just beautiful. You source these tanzanites yourself, you go directly and get it. Yes, get we it. were lucky enough to visit several times Merilani Hills and the mines there. And uh, <clears throat> we've got some contacts at people who are uh, collecting for us these tanzanites, but also sometimes other species uh, from the area. So we've got always a big selection of the tanzanites. And as Merrick scans over through here, you can see those uh, nice, beautiful tourmalines that we showed last year in a video. There's a new find from Morocco, and uh, they're lovely. Yeah, the, this area, Beni Buzra in Morocco, still produce. There are, these are very small pockets, usually just a few specimens from each of them. But uh, some pieces you see here are old and some are new, uh, collected end of last year. We do some research in the area and we hope to have more of this material in the future. I love the ones that are associated with the feldspar. Yeah, they are very great. cool. All right, next case, beautiful full case of calcites. Tell us about them. 
Yeah, this is very unusual material. If you go again to our website, spiriferminerals.com, on the right side you've got column with the articles. And uh, I think it was uh, 2000 or 2000, uh, 2021 when we published the article about this find. These are calcites come from Malaysia, what's very unusual Absolutely. location. Malaysia is mostly built by sedimentary rocks, so calcites and, and limestones. So calcite is not something surprising to find there. They are coming from the old quarry of limestones where uh, recently people go there and collect from some cave formations, some weird shaped rocks, which they sell to tourists. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that collecting, they broke into the cavity with the very nice calcite crystals, Great. which are unusual elongated prismatic. Can you pull one out and show us up close? Because sure. they, they have incredible luster on them. I'm not sure whether they'll catch that through the glass. From many people think from distance this is quartz because these crystals are the elongated, elongated growth. Yeah. yeah. So this is how the best ones of them looks like, and what you see in the showcase basically is 50% of the find. The other 50% we sold when the article was published online, and now we brought the rest of it. And are the smaller crystals a second generation of growth? Yes, there okay. is a second generation growth. Maybe you can keep that piece for a second, and I will. Uh, pull out uh, something else. And this is what I was talking about. These smaller crystals you see on the larger crystals, that's a secondary growth. Some of them got uh, a little bit of iron oxide, which give the orangish reddish color, and you can see this second generation growth on the calcites. So this is very unusual, limited find, and of course we never know, maybe they will find more, but uh, looks like it was one time thing mm. and, uh, and again malaysia is not a locality you hear about very often for minerals that's for sure. <laughs> all right let's okay, get these let's, put away let's put them away here all right and that's easy let's go to the other showcase all righty some more morocco stuff i'm guessing or so here we've got some minerals from poland but we were showing some of this material previously so i would like to show you a few things from this showcase. Very colorful pink cobaltoin calcites. Yeah, they are from the Democratic Republic of Congo and from Morocco. They are mixed here. But I, I wanted to point something else. Oh, okay. This is a very unusual specimen of quartz from Morocco. Uh, it's skeletal growth, the type of quartz we know from other locations, but from Morocco is not something common. It's one of the best pieces this style found there. You can call it window quartz. It was found in the Anti-Atlas Mountains in Sahara. Uh, What's the red year. inclusion in there? These are, this is clay with some clay. iron oxides. So this is just something a little bit different. Beautiful piece. And also we can mention a new find from New York area, the um, calcites from famous uh, famous Balmat uh, mine, which we'll see with other dealers too. This is something what's very classic for American mineralogy. Um, they are known for 100 years. And in the many museums, you could see the specimens with beautiful lavender color and beautiful twinning from, I believe, 20s mostly. Mm -hmm. Early, then, early. Almost nothing was showing up till very recently when the big pocket was hit and uh, several hundred specimens reach the market. Yeah, and large, and some of them with incredible clarity and so, such good luster and color. Good variety of color too. There were clears and pinks and lavenders. So that was an exciting new find for sure. It's awesome to see them in more than one location. Yeah, we will, <laughs> we will uh, for sure show it from uh, a Rocco Minerals room. He's one of the sources of this material. For sure. He lives in New York area. So. He, he's now living in Massachusetts, but originally from New York. Good friend of mine, Rocco. We'll meet him in just a couple of days. And this is a, a Polish case, if I'm not yes, mistaken, as correct? Yes, we are, our origin is from Poland. We always try to bring a few minerals from Poland, although our country is not very rich and prolific in, in minerals. So we've got some highlights, secondary highlights from copper mines in the, in the Lubin area. This is very interesting area. These are uh, world biggest silver producer mines and world third biggest uh, copper producer. Most of these uh, highlights come from depth of about 1,000 meters. 
The mine got over 10,000 kilometers underground, so it's a really huge operation. And what's the inclusion that's causing the green color in that? There I'm sure people would like to know. There is a bunch of secondary copper minerals, as this is copper mm -hmm. deposit, mostly copper chlorides and sulfates, um, several different species which give a color from gray, black, dark green, and open green. Then the orange uh, calcites you see in the case, they come from Grabischutze quarry. This is basalt quarry in lower Silesia. Um, very unusual color for calcite. Maybe crystals are not very big, but but the uh, specimens are very colorful for this type of calcite. Very bright. And I wanted to point to something was maybe not typical collector's specimen, but something very characteristic for Polish mineralogy, a flint. So in Poland, in the upper Jurassic uh, limestones, they are layers very rich in what we call striped flint. These are big nodules, uh, which are uh, cut and polished and this material traditionally is used for, to make a jewelry, but if you make nice slices, they remind the agates a little bit. Very much. I love the pattern and the swirling in there. It's really cool. So not many people bring that to the international market. It's mostly broken to pieces and then used as tumble stone or, or polishing material. What's interesting, some of these uh, outcrops with the flint was mined during uh, Neolithic period and uh, these flints were used to make uh, flint tools. Oh. What's quite easy to track nowadays uh, around the Europe because they've got very characteristic patterns. Mm. Very interesting. We can have a quick look on our Congo cases as we are very active in uh, Republic of the Congo where we are working in several locations such as Mfati which is zinc, lead, copper deposit. Uh, from there some hemimorphite sericites come from but most of what you see in the case are the blue vesaliites and hemimorphite from Palabanda, uh, Palabanda quarries, smithsonites from Yanga Kobenza, and dioptases from several different locations which are spread in the Minduli area in pool department, such as Sanda, Antola. There is many, many small locations. Heard, and Tola is not producing anymore, is that what I heard, or so, am I wrong? So, uh, it's not 100% true. And Tola okay. is a tunnel. Uh, originally, it's a tunnel run by a Chinese company, very small tunnel. This is from where the unusual um, casts of dioptas after probably Shatukite come from. Mm -hmm. uh, and this tunnel is not active anymore. But next to the entrance of, uh, of that tunnel, the local diggers of the ore start to just dig on the surface and they start to find beautiful dioptases with quartz and some other minerals such as shatukite and planchiite. Mm -hmm. In fact, shatukite was first time described from Congo. We got it from analysis from there. Mm -hmm. So Ntola tunnel with the classic uh, casts is not active, but we've got some different material coming from Ntola and we hope to bring more of it uh, to Denver. It's great. No, I always loved those pieces. It was great with the associations with the mimetites and the wolf and night you'd occasionally see it in them as well. And yeah, it's very it's colorful, very shiny, and mm -hmm. uh, for sure it's very attractive material. Well, as you can see, there's lots of activity in these rooms. It is <clears throat> opening day, lots going on. One more thing he wants to show us real quick before we wrap it up. We already showed that last year, but we've got more of the uh, ceramic products done by my friend Justyna Domańska Szuda. She's a scientist, mineralogist, but in her free time she's doing the uh, mineral pottery, whatever you can call it, and we have it here for sale. This is all handmade and uh, every piece is, is done individually. And uh, buying this pottery will support the project of the museum on which we work now in Poland. We plan to open the museum in next three, four years, we are just remodeling the building. And There's a lot of work to do to the building. So you showed me some pictures, I remember. It was <laughs> yeah, this lots is to do. A lot of work, a lot of work for sure. All right, well, yeah. Tomek, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for putting Mineral City TV together. Again, thanks to our cameraman, Merrick. This has been wonderful. We'll see you all tomorrow with another show. We'll look at some more rocks. Don't know where yet, it'll be a surprise. So join us tomorrow and have a great day, everyone. See you.